capacity uh, with him out there and also through the design build and the CDAs. Well, let me just ask you specifically, though, on that project, because your staff talked about it yesterday. Um, they haven't decided which way to go, how they're going to phase it, but the options 6A, B, and C seem to be the ones that look most viable to start. And it would be a situation where they would build either one or two managed lanes in each direction um, uh, that would provide a, a, a paid choice. I mean, a choice. It would improve, it would give solo drivers the opportunity to get out of that traffic. But it would be a toll project with no, at least initially, improvement to the free deal. Now, clearly, and it may be that with just 600 million, that's the best way you get down. But it's it's essentially telling folks we can't afford to give you anything more than a toll road right now. And that may be where you're at. Well, I think that's the challenge we've got with the resources we have. If you're trying to move people as quickly as possible out of congested areas, then you've got to build an infrastructure that allows you to do that quickly. That has the ability to leverage that to other opportunities. And so, as we talked about before, if a toll road allows you, and I think toll is very accepted out here. You know, I think Dallas, Fort Worth, and Metroplex, uh, we understand living here that you want to be able to move as quickly as possible, and toll provides the opportunity to jumpstart that better than any other opportunity we have. We're trying to take the finite resource of funding we have, and financing, and build roads around that. But what you're building is, what you're doing is, is paying half or a third of the cost for a private firm to come in. I mean, again, all these details will be settled, but um, to come in to build a toll project. And that's all you get. Now, the hope is it'll be some excess revenue that will help build you faster. Yeah, I think what you want to take that excess revenue, you want to monetize it. And but you will you be it, able to? I mean, well, that, I that's, that's a separate question. Details. And that gets to, as you go through analysis on this project or anything else, how can you ensure that you are capturing the right value, right? Because that's a key question. What's it worth? Are we getting what, it's, what we should be getting worth for? Are we getting it in a time efficient? Well, but here, let me just, I mean, okay. You're asking the private firms actually, what can you give us for 600 million? That's right. Words? And they're going to come back and tell you, we can give you this. Now, one way of measuring that is we can give you, a, a, you know, this much of a project, right? But to do that, they're factoring in how much can we give and still get our profit, of course, and all that. Um, they're not baking in, I mean, or if they're not baking in, we can give you this much project that's the net of our profit plus whatever revenue you're going to need to finance something. Well, I think that's part of the discussion. Right? I think that's part of what do we, what do we get out of it? The well, first thing we get out of it, we get more road. You know, end of, we have to go to the end of the story. If we need more capacity, I'm building more capacity. After that, then I decide what can I get out of the state to leverage that to get more capacity. Because it's an incremental part of the process, and then you get something for a certain value wherever it is in the state. And then is it is it fair though for the state to say, we don't have any more money for that, but we're gonna spend the local money or you know who owns the money is a question, but basically the six hundred million that's set aside from that. We're gonna spend that now and use it to entice a private firm and get what we can get, which will be, you know, more than we have now. Um, is that fair? Where maybe I think some local folks are saying, no, if you want to spend that 600 million, you got to put some skin in the game too, so we get something besides just a toll road. And now the answer is, well, where does that money come from, I guess? But it, I, think, I think you answered the question. I, I think if the, if the end result is to move people faster, then I'm going to do everything I can with every tool, whether it's public private partnerships, toll roads, CDAs, design build, uh, the bond money, to go move people quickly, efficiently, as quickly and as fast as possible. Because if you don't do that, then you're going to service because you're not getting the rifle shot you need to fix a particular problem at a particular time. Well, okay. I don't think it's clear that a, a couple toll lanes will fix that problem. No, but right? it does create the opportunity for any any type of project, but I think I want to take the macro standpoint. But we're, we're interested I, I, in this I know part. you are. <laughs> I'm macro. Is that anytime you're able to leverage opportunities to move people faster, whether it's managed lanes, toll lanes, the other thing we all look at doing uh, is how we look at reverse lane traffic. We know this smart about how we work for congestion management. We've yeah. got a lot of challenges in the state. We're going to look at how we, we maybe work with the feds of getting waivers for HOV because those roads are built with clean air money. 
by the things we can do that are smart with that? How can we take time of day usage? I mean, there are all sorts of things we got to look at that are part of this conversation. Right. And that money, whether it's two toll lanes or leveraging that to build two more toll lanes in the future and sitting there roads out further, we want to build as quickly and as much as we can. That's our goal. And the method of finance is part of the conversation, but sure, you, but you've got to get where we need to get to. Well, I think um, it lets you, it, some folks will argue that by doing it that way, it lets you off the hook. You can say, you know what, we're building you something. Well, you're not really. You're asking people to pay for their own improvements. You know, you know? I think that's part of the challenge with when you've got the growth. As I started the firm, too, the growing state. There's a lot of growth here. It's a great problem to have, but it also requires us to build infrastructure as quickly as possible and to pay for it in a way that makes sense as quickly as possible. And so, you look at all the money that's been spent in the Metroplex, uh, with the billions of dollars in projects that are on the books to be let or to go, it's more than $10 billion. That's a lot of money, which is where it needs to go in the growth areas like Dallas, Fort Worth, like Houston, like San Antonio, because you've got that triangle where people live in the state, 35, 45 corridors, right. where people the growth happen. And so we need to do everything we can to alleviate that congestion, build new capacity where we can, uh, but are you comfortable using the money that's saved up for the 35E project? Using all of that for a toll project that that's all the state can afford? I'm comfortable looking at every option we have. And if that's the option that presents the best ability to move people as quickly as possible, we need to have that at the top of the list. If there are other things we can do, we can look at those things as well. But we have an obligation to take every dollar we can to leverage that as quickly as possible. Let me ask you too, why, why the... Why the preference for the private sector? And I ask that in a sense. NTTA was asked to waive this, and it got a little bit touchy, but not too big. Given the past history, it was pretty smooth. But they were asked to either pass on the project or not, as was their right, but assuming no input, no money from the state, right? Um, or, but they weren't given the option, hey, what if we give you $600 million and all you got to do is build a couple toll lines on this? That, that, for the same reason the private firms are interested in that, that would probably be a moneymaker for them, or at least something that's feasible. Well, I think the obligation is textile. It has an obligation to the state as a whole from a statewide transportation standpoint. And as we're looking at policies uh, that impact the state and where we're going to go, we need to get the best value for the taxpayers of the state. Right. And the, the best value for the taxpayer may be we have the opportunity to leverage part of our resources into a toll road with the public-private partnership. And I think part of the challenge we've got is, is and this growth takes place is, that's just part of the conversation. I think the preference is, how can I get paid as a state but to have somebody build a road? But with respect, I, I, yeah. I wasn't asking about generally why why do a privatization. That, well, that was NTTA decision for this point. Was that it was a decision like a month ago, or yeah, I guess right there. before you got there. But it was not offered to them in the, the same terms. Got there. All right. So, uh, this is barely the point. <laughs> um, okay, let me stop this.